we meet again. This is NixOS number 75, entitled Nix Tips and Tricks. And I'm sure you can guess that I'm about to tell you some tips and tricks related to Nix. This talkie script entitled NixOS number 75 will be available in a link in the description. The first tip, trick, whatever you want to call it, uh, is relates to NixOS rebuild. And when you run, currently when you run NixOS rebuild, it, it sort of prints out the derivations it downloads and builds, but it doesn't print a summary of what it wound up doing. Uh, this little snippet here, which I will show you in context, is system activation scripts.diff thing, which I have in my, in my next configuration here, causes Nix NixOS rebuild to print a little summary of what it did. And I'll show you the outcome of such a thing. I will uncomment this SOPS thing from my from my environment system packages, such that I will now be installing SOPS. And we will do sudo OS rebuild switch. Okay, so it finished, and we see that we have this little line here that says, well, we have added packages. That comes from that little summarizer. And then we have A, which I guess means added plus. I don't know what the plus means, but uh, you know, if you had more than one, it would be number two, et cetera, et cetera. But um, it tells us SOPS. So it added SOPS 3.8.1. Another handy thing is uh, this project named Next Tree. Um, often, you know, Index derivations depend on each other. The build inputs of a derivation will name build inputs that can become runtime dependencies of a derivation. And we can see the relationship between those things, the dependency graph of any derivation using this next tree project. And it's over here, but all you really need to do to enable it is to go to your environment system packages and add mix three. You can subsequently use it and point it at any derivation in your your next door. I'm gonna use Python as an example here. And it's a little two-y thing. So we can see that Python depends on GCC. Uh, down at the bottom of the page down here we can see the next door path of the GCC it depends on. Open SSL read line, etc. Um, and then of course read line depends on curses. So if you were having problems with some derivation, uh, you can see its dependencies and where they live. Just in here you can actually search for stuff in here by pressing slash and you can just do glibc. Uh, so you can find stuff down through the dependency graph. It's pretty cool. The next nifty thing is called nixdu, and the way you can enable it is to go and add nixdu to your system packages. And uh, you also need to, in order to view the produced file, which is a, a dot dot file, uh, we have to install graphviz, so you have to put that in your system package as well. But once you have both of those things in there, we can do something like this, which will produce a PNG run next to you that will produce a dot file we'll run it through uh the graph is program called dot and we will redirect its output to a png so that tpng thing means please produce png all right now we can take a look at that file and over on the left hand side we'll see all the the roots for the garbage collector more or less if you if you're if you're got a bunch of disk space consumed, like let's say you forgot that you had Mac OS Ventura consuming 43.2 gigs of RAM, well, it's pretty easy to find out through this thing. Okay, so another tool that is quite useful is Nix Index, and it's a tool that indexes your system, and then there's another command called Nix Locate that will tell you which derivations provide a, a, a particular file name or a pattern of file names. Uh, you have to you have to run the Snix index program, which takes a while, 
And then once you do that, a subsequent round of mix locate will find a derivation or all the derivations that include a file by the name that you give it. So uh, let's say mix locate. I've already run the mix index thing. Oopsie, about six. I also have a type of list. <clears throat> way around <laughs> yeah so here are all the derivations that provide that file and yeah, we can see all all the next door paths of the derivations that provide such a file and in order to make that work you mix index inside of your system packages and that's about it so another tip is that in in various circumstances um it is useful to pin the symbolic name Nix packages uh, in operation and operations involving flakes and shells and whatever to the same version that your Nix OS rebuild is going to use. You can you can sort of read more about it over here. Uh, this is where I stole this from. Th and this this tip is only useful if you if you use flakes. If you if you don't, there's there's no no purpose to it. But let's take a look at the output of Nix registry list. Okay, so we have two lines here. One is this one that starts with system, and the other one is one that starts with global. And they both define a Nix package's symbolic name prefixed with flake colon. Be before I changed my configuration, there was only one one thing in here. It would have uh, it, it it looked like this. Uh, and that's what yours will look like before you do this stuff. I I've added this to my Nix configuration like so. So I have a Nix dot registry dot Nix packages dot flake equals inputs dot Nix packages. Inputs comes from in the flake configuration, we have to set special args here. And one of the special args has to be inputs which is this <laughs> you can i have a number of videos about flakes that you can watch that should explain that better but once you figure that stuff out you'll have an inputs in here that matches the inputs in your flake and then you can just say register uh, nix dot registry dot nix packages dot flake equals inputs nix packages and what that will do is it will cause this system line to show up here. And so what is what does it mean to have a system line like that and a global line like that? Well, I didn't know either. Uh, but what it means is that there are a number of registries and this Nix registry list command uh, sort of compiles them together. And uh, there's the global registry, which is on everybody's system. They're all pulled from the same place. And then there's a system registry, which is in let's see, mix registries. Yeah. So all this, all that foo for all that we did inside the, the configuration there that set inputs, uh, mix packages, uh, is, is to add this line to Etsy mix registry .json. And so why would we want to do that? Well, um, what it means is that we run Nix REPL like that. So if we say Nix REPL, Nix packages now, it will use whatever version of Nix packages that our flake is pinned to in the lock file. This, but but what it means is that it, it also helps when you when you use Nix shell because right now uh, the global Nix shell, or sorry, the global Nix packages reference is pointed at Nix packages on stable, which means every time you run Nix shell, it has to go download the new version of Nix packages on stable, which takes a few minutes and it's just really annoying. So this gets rid of that problem as well. This stuff, what I just showed you, all this, all the workarounds here that I just showed you to pin that stuff will be the default in Nix pretty soon. You can go check it out uh, at these two links here. So another nicety is to have the symbolic name Nix packages mean the same thing when you use old style commands like Nix dash shell, that is that is a pre flakes command and and the new well, it's a it's a pre new UI command that 
will eventually go away and will be replaced with Nick's space shell like that. But Nick's dash shell still exists. And right now there's no, there's no um, synchronization between like Nick's dash shell will try to use channel data. Uh, and that there's no guarantee that that'll be synchronized with the uh, symbolic name Nick's packages in the flakes regime. I can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth, to be honest with you. This is super complicated. But anyway, this just syn synchronizes those two up so that when you do Nick's shell or you do Nick's shell, you'll you'll always be dealing with the same same Nick's packages. And the way you do that is you go in and Nick's packages, Nick's path. It's uh, Nick's.NixPath equal a list where Nick's packages equal input Nick's packages. And inputs comes from the from the flake.nix file that you use as in the last one that I showed you. Um, this will also be the default soon enough. Uh, this workaround will be unnecessary pretty soon, but I, for right now we have to do it. If you use flakes, uh, it's kind of tricky to use the Nix REPL, or at least it's kind of clunky to use the Nix REPL to load flake variables into the REPL. Um, we can fix this by going to settings experimental features and if we add this REPL flake thing in here now after we run NixOS rebuild switch we'll be able to we need to place where there is a flake.nix like our configuration and we can do nix REPL and use some flake syntax and tap, type tab now I think the only thing that got loaded was NixOS configurations that type that I have a number of command a number of Systems defined, uh, right? So you can use that with any flake. Uh, you can use it with Nix, Nix, the Nix OS flake, or any other flake that you have on your system. This will all also be the default soon enough. Uh, there's a there's a pull request or issue there about it. All that being said, uh, usually I don't care so much about inspect, inspecting flake attributes. I I, I mostly want to look at Nix packages. The the packages that are Nix packages when I use the REPL. Um, so I created this little expect script to just preload some, some useful stuff into, uh, into the REPL. I just called it NixOS REPL and, uh, and it assigns package e packages equal legacy packages. I can never remember that. So I just, now I just can say packages and I can say Linux tab. Linux, oops. RPI, something like that. I added that to my configuration in here. I mix OS REPL. Added, I added that derivation to my environment system package, and I defined the derivation up above using red script bin as over here. Right. I think that's it. Those are all the tips and tricks I got. Let me know if you have some. Thanks for watching.